you're not going to want to miss what we're going to show you today. We've got some big rocks from Washington State that we're going to cut open and show you what's inside. Hi, I'm John, and I'm here with Cameron, my friend from the Bellevue Rock Club. Say hello, Cameron. Hello. <laughs> so what kind of rocks? Well, with luck, some are going to be jade, and the rest are going to be magnetite. Without luck, some are going to be talc, and the rest are going to be magnetite. So we're hoping for the former rather than the latter. Absolutely. Okay, let's get started cutting. Is this magnetite? Yeah, the dark stuff's a magnetite. All right, and this one has a pretty unique shape to it. Uh -huh. So I think if we cut this face, uh -huh. then that would make a okay specimen. Just like a desk ornament? Yeah. Why do you have a rock on your desk? And I'll just go, well, look. <laughs> so what's this? That should still be magnetite. It's just very, very old. It's kind of a different color, though. So you think this is jade? You know, it's pretty sure. But th you think this is magnetite? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And is it supposed to be magnetic? Yeah, it, it is magnetic. It's... Oh, look, this has got a, some kind of band in it. Yeah, yeah. If it looks any good in there, you could get some kind of cab that puts the band either diagonally right. or in the middle of the cab or something like that. It might look really cool. When you get a slab, you know, pretend this is a slab. What you'll do is you'll draw your cab on there. Right. And then you just use, you just put it in flat on the trim saw and you can just trim the outside off. And that way you don't have to grind it all the way back to your line. Right, right. And a lot of times, you know, you'll, you'll take a template. I'll show you the template in a minute, but you take the template and you just move it around until you, you go, yeah, that would be a good place for one. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a uniform material where it's good no matter what, then you just try to maximize how many you can get out of it. Right. You also want to look for cracks. Right. So if, if you have like this crack and it's going through there, like, like see that, that crack there? Yeah. You don't want to slice it this way because every one of them will break in half. If, that cra if you think that crack goes all the way through and I can see it, it goes up to at least there. Yeah, it looks like it does go all the way through. So in that case, to, to maximize your yield, you would, you would cut parallel to the crack. Yeah, some of them, um, you know, you, could, you can cut it right down the middle sometimes and it'll stay together. And you just use it as a specimen. Cameron wants to cut this, which looks like a piece of jade. And the first question is, which way does he want to cut? So you just want to take the end off and see what you've got yeah. and then get more excited about doing a bigger piece. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to mount it in this vise, uh, which has the clamp going this way. And we want to mount it like that to basically take off as little as possible and to give it some, some give, I'll put a piece of wood in there that'll tend to hold it a lot better. So then what you use is a wedge. Uh, uh, just stick it under or over, depending on which direction you wanna turn it. Get the wedge under the rock, at least to the end of the vise. And now you can see it's lined up with that. And some people think you have to just really beefy, you know, hold these. And that's just not the case. If your blade is good and your your feed rate is right, everything it it's it's pretty solid. See, I can't move it. The compression of the wood is what makes it solid. And what you can do is you can back it away from the blade and then put it down next to it. So if you look down there, that's the that'll tell you if you're parallel with the blade. What you want to do is then decide how much do you want to cut off. So you spin this around. And what I typically do is cut enough so that the end piece looks good too, right. as opposed to just crumbling away. Maybe about there. What do you think? Does that look too far? And then what I do is you don't want to have it touching the blade. So I, I move it up and I touch the blade and then I just back off a hair. And that means the threads just need a little while to get to the blade, but they're not touching at this point. So all we gotta do is plug it in and turn it on. Close the lid. <laughs> okay, Cameron's gonna turn it on. Woo! We're cutting. A rock like this will probably take about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, I just missed the change of pitch. When the rock touches the saw, you can hear the difference. Now, when you're all the way through the rock, the piece that you're cutting will fall off and it'll go clunk. Okay, but you're not done at that point. 
The rock is still in contact with the blade. You need to go just about a quarter inch more or else you'll get a saw mark right at the end of your rock. And we don't want that because that's just more work to take that out. So we wait an extra minute or two and you'll again hear the change in pitch when the blade is not cutting the rock anymore. And the reason it occurs like that is because the sides of the blade actually have diamond on them as well as the front. One way you can gauge without having a window in your saw, the saw lid is by how much of the chain do you have left. You can see there's not much chain here and so this rock is almost done. The reason this chain's here is it will eventually will pull that. And I know from this saw that this, this is not very much. So we should hear a clink any time now when the rock falls off, the, the part we're cutting falls off. Now the official way that you're supposed to do this is you turn off your feed screw first, okay? And so what that'll do is it'll give the blade enough time to take the pressure off of the rock because the rock is pushing into the blade. And by turning the lead screw off, it will, it will stop, the rock will stop pushing on the blade because the blade will finish the cut. So by now it's cut all the way, so there's no tension on the blade anymore. And so now you can turn it off. At this point, there's all this mineral oil mist. And when I do this in the garage, the mist goes everywhere. So usually I wait about 10 minutes for it to settle and I still get mist. And part of it is that the mist is heated up by the rock to blade transition where it generates heat from the cutting process. And so all that hot air carries that mist like right up into your face. <laughs> so you wanna kinda of like not get too close when you open it up. Can you see the mist? Blown away? Okay, you've seen it here live just to see if I was lying to the rock club. Ooh, yeah. Good to go. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Check that out. Oh. oh, my. Okay, so this piece is looking really awesome. That is a, a beautiful piece of green. Before I move that sled, I always check to make sure the switch is off. Because if the switch is halfway off, it'll turn it back on, it'll throw oil everywhere. So now I can pull that back and you can see the edge. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Very nice. Good job. Found some good stuff. I often tab the end piece because it doesn't look that great having one side so rough. Right. So that becomes the top of the cab. I've done that many times. It's like totally accidental. I'll find something really good that way. You count the number of turns here. I just count them um, and each turn is a certain amount because it's a threaded rod. And so I just go one, two, three, four. You can see four is going to be a little thin. It's about three sixteenths, I think. And so I'll do at least five. And so five is, is pushing a quarter inch. It's probably a little less. I forgot what the thread pitch is. But if you want a thick one, you go six. And that gives you more options. You can round more off. You can put more of a dome, depending on your personal taste. You can do a bigger piece and still have it show the angle. Um, so six is kind of safe. Depends on how much material you have. You know, the saw blade is also going to take away a lot. We got your piece of jade. Okay, some light. And uh, okay, there it is in the light. Nice piece of jade there. Okay, let's check the chain. See if it's ready to go. Yeah, it's probably done. We'll go ahead and shut it off. Slice slab number two. See all the mist? <laughs> I like doing it outside. Let's just grab this slab off of there. That one's even better. That's a nice piece of jade there. That'll make some fine cabs. Got some dark lines through it that aren't cracked. You could center on that or you could avoid them depending on what you want them to do. That's slab number two. So this is what it looked like before. And after we cut it flat, get a nice jade green. You want to do that one next? Okay, so you want to cut this face. Let's see what we've got. And maybe like three eighths of an inch cut off. Yeah, yeah that's really good to, to start that way because they fit in the saw really well because that vice clamps down instead of clamping from the sides. You know, taking the edge off. 
is, is a great thing to do to find out, you know, because sometimes you just got a rock, you get completely fooled. And it's like, oh, that goes out in a, you know, landfill. <laughs> it's good to take a test cut, unless you can already tell it's something great and you want to cut it like this way, because you don't, you don't want to have that one square edge if, if you end up just cutting it this way as a specimen. Yeah, for, my saw's not big enough to cut this one this way. Sometimes when you get like a really big one, you'd, you'd like want to go to, you know, some rock club or something that's got like a 25 inch saw <laughs> right. and, um, and, and pack it in there. But, you know, if that's a real specimen, I don't think magnetite is really in that category, right. but maybe, I don't know, it depends personal preference. Okay, we're going to cut this face off. We're going to cut enough to, so that the edge piece could be a specimen. Or like the jade was, it had, um, it, it looks like you could actually make cabs out of the end cap. Up first, here. And now what I'll do is I'll put the wedge under it because um, it's got quite a bit of slop in there, I think. And this does have hardboard, so it's not just metal on your rock. It's actually hardboard, which it's still compressible under this kind of tension. You know, normally you don't notice it's compressible, but it is. I come with a weather report. Pea-sized hail. Oh boy. Pounding. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. I think that'll work good. Let's get it. Let's bump it. Pull it back. Close the lid. And flip it on. Now we got the magnetite, and we'll make sure it's off. Open it up. Woo! Steam, oil, dust. Anybody knows how to knock that down, please let me know. Am I not running enough oil, or do I need some shielding or something? Because it gets all over my garage when I cut it in the garage. But here's what we get. And it looks very uniform. It's got some dark here and a little bit lighter here and dark along the edge. That's what it was like on the outside. That's on the inside. Okay, let's see what we got on the other half. Yes, it's off. Okay, there it is. <clears throat> Looks pretty much the same. Okay, next on the saw is this piece of jade. Hopefully it's jade and we'll find out when we cut it. We're gonna, we're gonna try to use this as the face in order to uh, pull some slabs off of that. So we're gonna clamp it way back here so that the saw can be adjusted uh, to, to come across that. <clears throat> I think I will use a piece of plywood to hold it a little better. Plywood's softer than the hardboard that's on the vise, and so it conforms to the rock better. Get the rock stable and then come along with the plywood and try not to turn the rock too much while we're doing that. Okay, the plane looks good. Now we can also see how many slabs we can get by turning the vise as far as it'll go toward the blade. And then if we take and we count, let's say five, five turn slabs, we'll see how many we get till we get to the face. There's one, two, three, four, five. So that's where the last cut would be. And one, two, three, four, five. So that's right about even with this. And I would, I think I would recommend taking that piece off rather than trying to keep the end because it's kind of a divot. Yeah. So we'll just go with that. Make sure it's all tight. Touch the blade and then back off. Close the lid. And turn it on. Is it gonna rain? Wow, it's really threatening. Okay, we're gonna give it a go. Okay, so we're now on back to Jade. There's the steam. Here's the piece. Oh, pretty, 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 pretty. I love it. I didn't quite catch that, but the other side might be flat because the saw blade thickness. Kind of cool with a hole in it, actually. We'll see what the other half looks like. Yep, it's smooth. That's a good side there. So we can go 
five. One, two, three, four, five. Load it up. And th so this one will be thinner than we did before for the other slab. Okay, and so then you'll, yeah, th thin works for a lot of stuff. Okay, we're ready to go. No. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Oh, it's, it's got, a, got a light tint to it. Is that gray or? It's definitely a lighter green. It's not as dark as that other piece. Mm -hmm. Might make a nice contrast. Love the black and the green together. This this could make just an amazing cab right there. Yeah. You know, you can also take wherever you have a line and you just draw it like a circle or an oval around it. And um, and so then the line runs through it. It kind of looks cool when you cab it out. You got some good stuff. So the weather's not cooperating. Okay, Cameron, how, how many cabs have you done in your whole life? Zero cabs. <laughs> Let's see what you're going to do. Have some Nephrite Jade. Nephrite Jade from Skagit River in Washington State, United States. Or up north. Up north, from where we are. He's going to make a beautiful cab. Are you ready? Yeah, I got it. Not ready as I'll ever be. Let's go. This is gonna go great. I can't wait Different to height. see it. It's gonna be 45 degree angles. Yeah, let's see your progress. There you go. Oh gosh, that looks good.